Thank you, Maya, and thank you, everyone, for your words. I was already taking notes eh, because you already mentioned many interesting things, but uh, let me first, uh, as uh, Maya suggested, let me uh, share my screen. My presentation uh, is a basic one. I hope you can now see the nice uh, pink uh, visual identity that uh, we have prepared for you this year. Uh, so, as, uh, as you said, Maya, uh, I work at EuroCities, is the network of the major European cities. We work on different aspects, not only on sustainable urban mobility, but I have the pleasure to work 100% during the whole year only on European Mobility Week. Uh, together with me, there are two other organizations, ICLEAN Polis, and together we manage the European Secretariat on behalf of the European Commission, the move of the European Mobility Week campaign. Actually, European Mobility Week campaign, the, let's say, legal term or the official name is the European Commission's flagship awareness raising campaign on sustainable urban mobility. But this is a long name. So the commercial name, if I can say, is European Mobility Week. Even, I mean, everyone understands this, even if we uh, use it in uh, all other languages, uh, like, for example, here you have it in German. Let me uh, explain a bit the uh, structure of the campaign, how, how it is structured internally. Most of you already know many things about European Mobility Week. I will try to uh, challenge yourself. I will maybe ask some questions to see if you know um, the initiative uh, so well. And if uh, I'm saying something that is obvious for everyone, please just um, stop me or, or something is not clear on the other hand also stop me and I will explain further. So to explain a bit the, the structure of the campaign uh, as I said um, the European level is the European Commission they launched the initiative and together with them at European level Eurocities, ICLE and Polis are managing the campaign but the campaign is based, the structure is based in a very well established network of national coordinators in the EU and here you can see their faces. Basically, they are people based at the Ministry of Environment or Infrastructure or Transport or the agency. It depends on the country. Uh, so they dedicate uh, their time, uh, among any other things, uh, to promote the message of the campaign among local authorities in their respective countries. But we also have national coordinators in countries beyond the EU. Here you can see uh, some faces from neighboring countries like Norway, Turkey, Bosnia and Serbia. They are also super engaged, super active, super committed to the message of European Mobility Week. But we also have people uh, in faraway countries like Argentina, Japan, Peru or South Korea. Back home in Germany, your national coordinator is uh, Claudia Kiso from the German Environment Agency. You can contact her at any time during the year at emw.uba.de uh, and uh, she will be more than happy also to help you um, understand a bit better the, the dynamics and the message of uh, this uh, Europe-wide initiative, European Mobility, which is actually a huge initiative where more than 3,000 towns and cities uh, participated. Now, let's talk about this year campaign. But first of all, going back to last year, 2020 uh, was the year where European Mobility Week celebrated or focused on zero emission mobility for all. That was the theme, the topic for last year. This year, 2021, European Mobility Week is on safe and healthy with sustainable mobility. Already in the title of the theme, you can see three topics, three dimensions, three themes within the theme is safety, health, and sustainability. And if this wasn't enough, three topics within one topic, we also can say that uh, 2021 is the year where European Mobility Week celebrates its 20 years. So there will be other activities and other celebrations during the year. We are already more or less in half of the year uh, to go back in time and understand how we were 20 years ago and how still the message of the campaign is relevant 20 years later. But uh, let's focus uh, on 2021 
on safe and healthy with sustainable mobility. I can maybe explain later if you want how we select uh, this theme because um, I'm quite proud of it. It's a, quite a democratic process. Uh, this is one of the European initiatives. Uh, someone from the European Commission did you move set one in one conference uh, at the time when we had a physical conference in front of a big audience, and he said that this is one of the few initiatives uh, or platforms where you can really see all um, level of governance, uh, European, national, regional, and local working together, sharing the same message. It's, it's a good example for other initiatives. The proof is that uh, the, the highest number of participants, uh, almost 3,000 towns and cities last year, despite the situation, and also the, um, the, the existence of the campaign over the last 20 years. But um, this theme, safe and healthy with sustainable mobility, is uh, reflected, is represented with a call to action or a slogan, uh, also uh, agree with the national coordinators, and this one is move sustainably, stay healthy. For us, the multilingual aspect of the campaign is very important. Europe is a, is a complex region with many languages, so we also invest from the European Secretariat our time and our resources to prepare all the materials in uh, the EU official languages. Here you just have an example of some of the languages, the list is not complete, but um, I wanted to highlight that we have to speak the same language of the people uh, in both senses. The same language, I mean, the same mother tongue, but also the same language, the same words and not, well, today we are with uh, we experts from, from technical university, but sometimes we have to be careful and not be, try not to be too technical. Actually, Maya said something at the beginning. I, I took note, I, I like it when we're talking about uh, changing behaviors, how can we implement what was discussed yesterday? I remember yesterday, someone was uh, talking about emotions um, or even perceptions. And uh, related to that, um, I think we even ourselves, when we present internally these kind of initiatives, we also have to take care of the language that we use. Uh, because I, for example, I don't like to say change behaviors. I don't want you to change. I don't want to make you change. Maybe it's better to say, try new ways of moving because then you are inviting people to feel an emotion instead of, uh, no, uh, you have to change because I'm telling you. So the language here is also super important. Anyway, as I told you, I can talk for, for, for many hours about this topic, but let's move forward uh, in our presentation. Why this theme? Uh, why this call to action? Uh, this slogan, move sustainably, stay healthy. The focus, you know that there are, the theme is, uh, has three dimensions, safety, uh, health, and sustainability, but the focus is uh, clearly on health. And this is uh, easily explained in the context of uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, over the last uh, months, we have seen in media and experts are uh, alerting us about the mental health issues. Um, we should even think about those problems that we are not talking about yet, um, because uh, mental health is a very complex situation. Uh, sometimes it's even a taboo. So our network of local campaigners and national coordinators were quite brave, and the European Commission as well, they were very brave in selecting this theme uh, as a topic for the campaign. The question is um, that as a sustainable urban mobility campaign, we care about your physical uh, health, but also about your mental health. We are very used to uh, prepare guidelines and documents and exchange examples on how um, sustainable mobility has an impact or has benefits in your physical activity, in your physical uh, health. But what about mental health? We usually forget those ones. And as well, we were talking about emotions uh, now. Um, mobility also has an impact in, in our well-being, in our mental well-being. So the question is, how can we contribute to the well-being of Europeans if we assume that the way we move is a very good part, a big part of our daily lives, 
it wouldn't be a surprise to understand that mobility has an impact in our well-being in, in, in the way we feel, right? So we have really to take care about mm, the way we move within our cities. This theme of uh, safe and healthy with sustainable mobility is also interconnected, is closely related to many other activities or initiatives uh, at European level. Just to name just a few, uh, the European Road Safety Charter recently launched because we cannot talk about health um, mobility or about healthy lifestyle if it's not in the context of safety, of course. But also um, it's uh, related to the recently launched sustainable and smart mobility strategy of the European Commission. Uh, also with an initiative on uh, beating a uh, cancer plan, um, especially in the prevention aspect of this uh, plan at European level. And uh, also the connection is uh, made with the already existing, uh, for a few years already, the European Week of Sport that is happening, is taking place right after uh, European Mobility Week each year. Not only with these activities, even with the European Year of Rail 2021, apart from being many of the things like the 20 years anniversary of the campaign, is also the European Year of Rail. And uh, light rail uh, can be also a very good solution for um, urban mobility. Of course, the initiative as such, the European Year of Rail, is much wider than urban mobility, um, you can imagine. And there is also another European initiative, the European Climate Pact, recently launched, uh, that is also connected to European Mobility Week. From the office, the home office here in Brussels, we are closely working with all colleagues um, managing these initiatives because it's very important that uh, we are on the same page, as I said, on the European level, on the national level, and also on the local level. Without towns and cities, actually, this campaign, European Mobility Week, is nothing. But we need to agree from the very beginning, from the very first uh, point of the structure. Let's not forget that uh, we are talking about active mobility, walking and cycling is maybe the first thing you can think when we are talking about healthy mobility, but public transport uh, is also a very important part of the mobility systems in our cities. Without public transport, without strong public transport, we cannot uh, work on active mobility and working and cycling as well. That's why we launched an initiative last uh, year uh, that is staying beyond. Uh, we love public transport during European Mobility Week 2020 and beyond. Uh, we have to acknowledge the continuous effort of the public transport sector to, to keep cities moving in a sustainable and healthy way. You can actually, actually watch also a small video clip uh, on the website explaining this initiative. So, the year 2021, Maya, uh, Noara, interrupt me if you want to ask any question or to, to say something, but if you, if you want, here you have a calendar. Uh, the year 2021 is going to be full of highlights and important dates to, to mark in your agenda. But of course, I just wanted to highlight now one, and it's the actual dates of the celebration of European Mobility Week from 16th to 22nd of September. And I have a question here for you. Do you know why 16th, 22nd of September? No, okay. There is an explanation is closely related to the 20 years of the campaign. Uh, a bit of history. The first uh, car-free activities experiences were in the late uh, 90s, in the year 2000, uh, in, in some European countries and, and in other countries of the world as well. At the time, I was super young. I was at secondary school. And uh, in the year 2000, uh, the World Car Free Day was officially established for the 22nd to 22nd of September. The initiative was so successful that two years later, in 2002, the European Commission, at the time, the Director General for the Environment, decided to celebrate not only one single day, but one full week of activities heading to the celebration of Car Free Day. And that's why European Mobility Week is always 16, 22nd of September, because it's the week exactly before World Car Free Day. Within the time, the rules were a bit more flexible, and in some cities, they celebrate Car Free Day in the Sunday during European Mobility Week. But the original date was that one. And that's why next year will be also 16th, 22nd, and in 2023, 2024, 2025. It's a, it's a recurrent question, but you have now the answer. So that's the most important dates. 
Uh, now, what towns and cities are doing, it will be from next uh, week, they have four or five months to register their activities. They can do it uh, now and they can update the program as many times as they wish. And people can check the information on the website so they can, someone living in Rome uh, can see what is planned to happen in uh, uh, Marseille, for example. And one of the things that cities are super interested as well is uh, the prestigious recognition, the prestigious award after the campaign. We will give uh, towns and cities uh, one month to apply for the European Mobility Week awards right after the one month, uh, the, the month after the celebration of the campaign. But uh, all the information will be available on the website. Actually, we celebrated the European uh, Commission Sustainable Urban Mobility Awards, including the European Mobility Week Awards. We celebrated uh, a couple of weeks ago on the 19th of April. It was a virtual a digital award ceremony. Uh, it's uh, 50 minutes. You can watch it again on, on YouTube. Uh, here you can see how, how funny it was. Uh, people were super, super enthusiastic. And in that award ceremony, the names of the winners were revealed. Bilbao, Grenoble, Lilienthal, and Munchen Hlagbach. Sorry for my pronunciation. It was super difficult this year. <laughs> but uh, we were happy that for the first time, the same country has taken the two categories of the award for the smaller and for larger municipalities of the European Mobility Week Award. European Mobility Week Award is basically uh, given to those cities that have done the most in the previous edition of European Mobility Week, so in 2020. But it, the, the award is revealed, is announced in the year after, in 2021. And these awards are presented together with two other European Commission's awards, the one on urban road safety, it speaks by, by itself, so I don't need to explain what it is, and the SUMP award that stands for Award for Sustainable Urban Mobility Planning. So you can watch uh, the videos presenting the reasons why the, the, these cities won the awards on YouTube. But there is another video, short video, 40 seconds, that explains the theme of the campaign, safe and healthy with sustainable mobility. You can also watch that video on YouTube already. It's uh, one of the materials, one of the many materials that we have uh, prepared. Maybe I should say that we are preparing for you uh, for this campaign. For the moment, you can find on the website the poster and the visual identity, but very soon uh, you will also have, when I say very soon, I'm talking uh, if uh, everything goes well by next week, because we already have fresh from the oven, uh, a document called thematic guidelines, where we explain uh, the theme of the year, the three different aspects, and we also provide examples from other cities working in, in these um, dimensions of safe, and healthy with sustainable mobility. So as you can see, for me, the year is, uh, I'm going to stop the presentation here. For me, the year is super busy always. The campaign cycle is, uh, is uh, always, um, every month we have something to do with national coordinators, with local campaigners. Uh, and we are also happy, uh, we are always happy to see that um, 20 years after, Many towns and cities, we are talking about, as I said before, around 3,000 are still engaged with the campaign message and they still see the potential to promote sustainable urban mobility uh, in September and to showcase the measures and to connect with people, to uh, have people on board, to discuss, to see how they can improve the way you move in cities. At the end of the day, everything is for the good quality of life of people living in cities. So that's all from my side. I don't know if you have um, any questions. Uh... Yeah, thank you, Juan. That was really an uh, interesting talk. I mean, I know I knew a little bit about uh, the Mobility Week, but I didn't know the larger picture behind uh, it. Uh, Bela, think... Bela hat hier uh, sorry. He. No, I, I lost what I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, um, the, I think the topic of this year is really interesting, the focus on mental health and also physical health. And I think in mobility, there are so many, um, I, I would say, also injustices about where you live and how uh, traffic and uh, cars affect your health. 
uh, in terms of your location, whether you live close to the street and there's also social injustice there. So I think that's a super interesting, interesting topic. And I'm looking very much forward to the 16th to 20 second. Good. Yeah, actually, selecting the theme is not an easy task. I didn't explain in detail. I said it's a democratic process. Usually, already in November, uh, we propose, when I say we, I'm talking about uh, Euro cities uh, uh, and the, the, Euro, the, the Secretariat. We have a look at the different trends in urban mobility, and we propose two or three ideas to the European Commission and to the network of national coordinators. So already in November, we discussed with all national coordinators in our in one of our meetings. We have three meetings uh, a year. We propose these themes, and then they check in generally at home. Okay, in my country, this is more interesting. People are more aware of this thing, or the ministry has this priority, so it would be better to promote this other theme because we will have more visibility. And then, um, sorry, I said November. In June, we do this exercise. Uh, so already in June this year, we will discuss the theme for September 2022. Mm -hmm. And then in November, we took the final decision. We, 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 over the summer, the, the, the different ministries have the opportunity to exchange with uh, local campaigners. And in November, we take the final decision. So when the new year starts, we are ready to prepare all these campaign materials. It's always a, a cycle that is, is, a, is a non-stop cycle. And, and as I said, I'm quite proud because it's quite democratic. Of course, it's always difficult to find um, a theme or a topic that uh, applies for every single corner in Europe. As I said before, Europe is multilingual, but multicultural. It's a very complex region, but it's, it is also the magic, right, of a decentralized campaign that they can take the message and they can adapt it to the local reality. That's the idea of a decentralized campaign. For me, it's a challenge because sometimes I got messages from uh, stakeholders here uh, working in the EU bubble and I have to explain, but listen, European Mobility Week, I mean, I'm doing nothing during, during the month of September because 3,000 towns and cities are busy with their local programs. So basically during the week, I, I don't have anything to offer you. I can invite you to these 3,000 towns and um, cities. It's, it's, it's difficult to explain because many people think that European Mobility Week is a big policy conference at European level, like uh, it's the case for other big weeks like the European Sustainable Energy Week or the European Green Week. There are more, let's say, centralized events here in Brussels with uh, then parallel events uh, all across Europe. But Mobility Week is exactly the opposite. Everything is decentralized. So it's a big challenge, but personally, I love it because it's really being close to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. That's really, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's really exciting. And uh, um, actually, it's, it's also a bit part of the challenge that we are, uh, um, uh, that we are meeting because uh, SIGMI, to come back to, to our, you know, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Sustainable, inclusive, global mobility initiative. So the global part of it is actually also something that, that, that is challenging us a bit because our idea definitely has been to um, organize or to try to develop events which can happen on a global level, mm -hmm. maybe at the same time in parallel, et cetera, and uh, to, to take action locally, but somehow to feel you know, connected on a, um, on a global level. Mm -hmm. And uh, but but the decentralized uh, let's say nature of the whole thing makes it much more difficult actually to 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 um, to, to link up with others, which is totally fine. But I think the the uh, or it's something that that needs to to develop. But uh, what I would be curious about is, for example, um, how is it possible for uh, actors in new countries? For example, Tunisia, I'm just giving an mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. out of my head, you know, to adhere or to be part of it or uh, to be integrated. Uh, do they need uh, to be like a, like a public actor or is it possible, you know, for NGOs to start something and to adhere? How uh, is there a process for that? Yes, um, I can explain. It doesn't matter if they are in Tunisia or in uh, in uh, Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone is welcome to, to participate. The difference is if they are a local authority, so town or city, uh, 
-hmm. or uh, another organization, NGO, schools, universities. So uh, when the campaign was launched in 2002, it was only possible. I mean, the target of the campaign is for, is it is twofold. First, l local authorities, um, decision makers, and we also target the public, both at the same time. But let's say that only Townsend cities could register. But in 2015, uh, we opened up the possibility to other organizations to also register by themselves in the campaign. And we call this category mobility actions. So if you have a mobility action as a university, as an NGO, as a private organization, could be even a big company working with employers on sustainable mobility. Ideally, you, we always encourage to contact your local authority uh, and uh, try to embed these uh, activities in the local program of, for European Mobility Week, especially if these activities or if these actions are taking place during the week of the 16th, 22nd of September. But if you are doing something, for example, a challenge for employers or a more um, a wider campaign that, that is not limited to the week of 16th, 22nd of September, you can also register it by yourself using this other category, mobility actions. Mm -hmm. So indeed, indeed, the, the campaign since 2015, the campaign, the registration in the campaign is open to any kind of organization. The only difference is that local authorities registration, so towns and cities, the registrations is done, it can be done in the local language and it's approved, it's checked and approved by the national coordinator. But these uh, organizations other than cities must be done in English because it's us, the European Secretariat, checking the eligibility and approving the registration. So that's, the, that's one of the differences. But they can benefit from the same visibility. They can use the same resources, the same visual identity, the same uh, guidelines. The same resources are available for, for them as well. All right, yeah, thanks, Juan. That's really, uh, that's really exciting. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to collaborate. Sure, sure. It's a uh, partnership is one of the keys of the of European Mobility Week. It's one of the key success. It's actually one of the criteria for the European Mobility Week awards. Uh, the jury, the expert jury, is an independent one. I'm not the one giving the the awards. Uh, they take into account not only the focus on the annual theme, the implementation of permanent measures, because it's not only about organizing a campaign. It's also about implementing the right infrastructure. Uh, this is the one of the Five, five criteria. And the last one is partnerships. Uh, partnerships is also super important. When we talk about partnerships, it's super easy to think that, okay, but the city, but first of all, the city has to work at the city level with their own departments. So you also have to engage the cultural department, environment for sure, and many other departments. And then the EC partnerships are working with the schools, working with, uh, let's say the usual success, right? But we also encourage to work with any kind of partner. Local businesses are super important. It's a super important planet. But in recent years, we also have to talk about influencers, young people, uh, celebrities, if you can call it, local celebrities, that they also have to be engaged because everything is about communicating, opening up a debate um, that can be at different levels. During Mobility Week, you can, you can organize and a round table with experts talking about the sustainable urban mobility plan of the city. Uh, but you can also organize, um, uh, let's say, a much more uh, familiar event where you are talking in a more normal language with people about how do they see their future. Just give them a pencil and ask them to draw how they want to see their streets. We have this concept of, of a city, if we see from, from the air, like everything is done for... Um, uh, following the streets for cars, but maybe people can imagine something completely different. So that's why involving young people is super important with any kind of expertise.